uh, narcissism is a broad and widely used concept and phenomenon in our society today. And then um, um, social psychology and social political uh, definitions uh, refer more to, to leadership and power and misuse uh, thereof. But in, in social media, it refers to reputation and fame and re self recognition and uh, uh, those kinds of, of uh, related things, you know, in, including scandals and stuff. But in clinical psychology, uh, narcissism refers to feelings and attitudes towards oneself, and it is the core of self esteem, core of emotions, and sense of identity. And it influences both the way one sees uh, oneself and how one relates to uh, others. Um, and then the, there is a range in the narcissism. I want to, to uh, specify this a little more in detail because there is normal healthy narcissism and it refers to uh, more positive and reality anchored uh, sense of self-worth and self-regard and self-acceptance, curiosity, compassion and pride and the ability for enjoyment and, and interpersonally, uh, narcissism motivates regards and, and care for others, a connection uh, to, to others, uh, as well as sharing uh, the genuine interest in others' thoughts and feelings. In other words, commitment and empathy. Um, there is also another thing associated to narcissism, namely self-preservation and then um, regular entitlement, rights to survival and protection and uh, oneself and one's uh, territory. Um, narcissism relates to ideals and aspirations and ambitions, we can say grandiose fantasies, uh, but then um, they may not be uh, totally grandiose or totally unattainable. It's ability to differentiate between what is possible, wished for, and maybe not possible or not possible today, but you never know in the future. And it's connected to a sense of agency, real competence, responsibilities, um, and the feeling of being engaged in relationships and in charge of short feelings, actions, and impulses. Um, normal narcissism also helps to challenge, helps handle challenging situations, tolerate uncertainty and insecurity, criticism and setbacks. It's a way to help to bounce back and to handle self-conscious emotions such as shame, envy, um, humiliation, frustration, guilt. But foremost, it relates to the capacity to tolerate and understand and regulate anger. There is also what we call exaggerated uh, narcissism, right? or uh, what we can say also narcissistic personality style. Uh, it's more culturally determined. It's prominent in more individualistic and highly competitive societies. It's characterized by self-promotion or rivalry or critical or condescending uh, attitudes towards others, and social maneuvering. But it's, it's more noticeable in certain age groups or subcultures uh, in, in today's societies, or some societies. And then it's also more related to self-determination and the, what can come with that is interpersonal ignorance of other people or arrogance or intolerance of obstacles and the exceptional self-promotion in certain situations. But it is usually not related to underlying severe personality pathology or narcissistic uh, personality disorder. And that differs then from pathological narcissism, and which is characterized by fluctuating or dysregulated self-esteem and emotions. Uh, people struggling with pathological narcissism shows grandiosity and make effort to enhance 
themselves so to take the support, uh, their sense of uh, uh, enhance their specific special self. Um, and they, they try also to avoid threats and the sense of inferiority that can be caused by negative feelings and experiences, especially those reflected upon itself. Um, but at the same time, they are also vulnerable. Um, because pathological narcissism and MPD has usually traditionally been associated with grandiosity or over evaluation of positive feelings uh, or qualities. Uh, but more recent studies have really shown that both grandiosity and vulnerability occur and interact and fluctuate. Um, and vulnerability, um, that relates to self-negativity, being the worst, to failure, unworthy, undeserving. And that can paradoxically spur and motivate the grandiosity with the exceptional strivings or control or effective avoidance. But on the other hand, vulnerability with low self-esteem, insecurity or self-doubts and uh, self-depriving comparisons and shame can be concealed uh, and covered up by grandiose self-enhancing extrovert confidence. Uh, so it's a complex thing here of how these things coexist and, and fluctuate and affect each other. Pathological narcissism, difficulties tolerating emotions, processing emotions, understanding emotions, uh, regulate the feelings, especially anger, shame, and envy uh, is very common. And all this contributes to significant internal struggle and difficulties for individuals um, uh, to relate and to, to uh, inter interact and hold on to relationships and manage interpersonal situations. Um, and pathological narcissists can be expressed in temporary reactions to specific traits or in a stable and during narcissistic personality disorder. And the, the MPD, narcissistic personality disorder, refers to the stable long-term personality function that meets uh, DSM-5 uh, criteria for, for MPD, uh, uh, either in the trait-focused or in the hybrid model in, in uh, section uh, two in personality disorders, uh, the, the alternative model. Pathological narcissism has also been associated to different levels of function. People with this condition can be high functioning, a competence, sense of agency, goals, motivation, career-wise uh, or uh, otherwise very well-functioning, social affiliations, and even if some interpersonal closeness relationship. And for these people, their narcissistic pathology can escalate in specific situations that they experience as threatening or it can be limited to certain traits. It's, uh, they are specifically arrogant, so they are condescending or competitive. But independently of level of severity, pathological narcissists can either be overtly striking and, and obtrusive, or it uh, can be covert, internally concealed, and, and nearly unnoticeable for other people. And the fluctuations and interactions between vulnerable and grandiose narcissistic personality function can also depend upon life context. So specific life events can suddenly be very threatening uh, to self-esteem and escalate narcissistic pathological functioning. Um, they, on the other hand, they can also be supportive of uh, uh, narcissistic functioning. Engagement in work uh, or, or studies and specific interpersonal community affiliations can sometimes protect and strengthen self-esteem and counterbalance uh, difficulties with self-esteem um, or uh, absence of, of more close mutual relationships. Um, but on the other hand, uh, failure to confirm 
conform to work and, and study requirement or measure up to social community expectations can be uh, extremely challenging uh, for people with this condition. So to summarize, so narcissism is a complex phenomenon. And they affect both the ways individuals perceive and feel about themselves, and also how they understand and deal and relate to and ha handle uh, situations with other people. Well, that's uh, uh, another range of complexities because um, patients' motivation to engage in psychotherapy and, and work in, in, in therapy towards change can vary a lot. They may come to treatment and realize that they need to change, but they are often quite resistant, skeptical, and actually also quite afraid of uh, or uh, making efforts to avoid to change. Um, and it means giving up deeply rooted ways of functioning, uh, being in control, perceive and relate to others, and a certain pattern of reasoning that uh, uh, they uh, want to, to hold on to. Uh, so in other words, then, um, uh, starting therapy can uh, evoke um, uh, strong resistance and uh, uh, negative uh, feelings. Um, and that can be expressed then in patient's way of relating to, to therapies. Patients can relate in a wide way, range of, of ways. They can idealize the therapies, you're the best, you can fix my problems, or they can devalue the therapies. You don't understand, you can't help me. Yeah. Um, and they can be very engaged and provide intellectually very elaborative well-articulated descriptions of their difficulties or their relationships, but they can still remain distant and avoidant of the real deeper problems. So in other words, they can uh, form what we call pseudo-alliances with the therapist, and the real narcissistic pathology remains split off and even unaccessible. Uh, some can be very shy and avoidant and convey very little about themselves. And others can be reactive, critical, aggressive, inviting disagreements and conflicts with the, the, the therapist and very strong countertransference. Uh, often, often as a way to redirect the therapist's attention away from the real problems, or even to prove that the therapist is wrong. But the other thing is too that patients uh, with narcissistic pathology or MPD can also be very collaborative in certain situations when they are really motivated for change and realize that they have to change. And that is uh, was often based on uh, realities in their own life experiences. Uh, my boss has told me if I don't stop uh, uh, criticizing my co-workers, uh, I, I would, would be, be promoted, I might be at risk of fire. The patient comes to, to therapists, I have to learn to deal with my anger, my frustration, and that we can have a genuine direct motivation. Uh, they can be very open to the therapy's interventions and mobilize courage and motivation to implement new ways of behaving or, or uh, relating. So that's that's an important. That doesn't mean that they are in, uh, they are motivated to deal with additional problems that may be underlying and causing it. But they are in, uh, they are uh, motivated for a specific change. we have some really, really important uh, advances um, over the past uh, few uh, years. First of all, uh, narcissism has traditionally been um, uh, associated with grandiosity uh, and uh, enhanced uh, self-experience uh, and related way of behavior. But, 
uh, we have uh, come to realization here now that grandiosity and vulnerability uh, coexist and fluctuate, and that there is a, com a, a complex interaction between self-enhancement, grandiosity, and self-evaluation, vulnerability, and security. We even know now that grandiosity may not be the most central feature all the time of pathological narcissism. Uh, in, in other words, vulnerability uh, may not just be underlying and hidden, hidden uh, uh, behind the grandiosity, but actually be the, the most important feature in people uh, with uh, more intermediate and, and maybe severe levels of MPD. And grandiosity may be hidden and mostly stay on fantasy level, but still have an impact on uh, behavior and functioning. So that's a, a new thing to, to keep in mind when assessing and, and the treating people uh, with um, uh, pathological narcissism and MPD. Um, the other thing uh, uh, is uh, too that People with pathological narcissism and MPD have been associated with lack of empathy. But it's research, uh, neuro, especially neuropsychological, neurocognitive research have shown that uh, MPD have compromised and fluctuating sense of empathy, but do not lack empathy. And this is very, very important. Lack of empathy often has been used as a sort of a critical a derogative assignment or, or to people with, with narcissistic personality disorder and contributed to stigmatize uh, NPD. These people have problems with emotional empathy, as in the ability to attend to or tolerate others' emotions and own emotional reactions related to other what they see as others' emotional experiences. But they have impact cognitive empathy. That means that they can see, recognize, and understand others' feelings. But they may not uh, be able to, or they may not want to emotionally engage um, and show care and concern. And this is a, a very, very important uh, uh, new perspective that uh, where we have research from, from neuroscience as well as uh, more research related to, to narcissism. The other thing is uh, that um, uh, people with pathological narcissism and empathy are not just provocatively strong, assertive, and, um, and grandiose and, and, and empowered, which has been the, it, it's sort of a traditional way of, of looking at it. But indeed, they really struggle with internal insecurity, inferiority, shame, self-criticism, self-hatred, even fear, and some struggle with suicidality. And then MPD has gradually been considered a distress disorder um, with considerable internal pain and struggle with functional impairment and, and suffering. And I think that that um, opens up um, an, an opportunity for especially for us um, therapists, clinicians, to approach and see beyond what can be a facade, of the, the, the typical uh, um, way of seeing and, and describing uh, NPD. Another thing is that healthy and pathological narcissists do coexist too. Just because somebody has narcissistic personality disorder, does not mean that they cannot have moments or areas of healthy or even quite exceptionally normal personality abilities. So narcissism is not just about psychopathology and vulnerability. It can be associated with exceptional courage, extraordinary achievements, perfectionism, perfect performance, amazing competitive ability, endurance in cha challenging situations, and healthy entitlement. And this is also something to, to keep in mind uh, uh, and then um, attend to uh, in treatment with these um, 
patients who can really struggle in, in, the, in, the, in one area, but actually show competence in, in other areas. And then uh, we have recent research studies and focus on pathological narcissists. And I have to say, especially those uh, coming from uh, um, uh, Italy. Uh, I have listed uh, several uh, colleagues here who have done remarkable um, contributions. And it has really, uh, here research ha has really verified the complex interaction and fluctuations in individuals with pathological narcissists, not only between grandiose and vulnerable narcissists as the foundation, but also related to internal overt versus external, overt expressions, uh, behavior, level of functioning, self-regulation, uh, specific emotions, sense of identity, external life context. And in other words, these studies attend to underlying mediating factors and to interactions and fluctuations between traits, states, context, and related to both self and object representations, as well as interpersonal relationships. Um, I can name Rosella de Pirio, Chiara Panfilis, Andrea Fossatis, Vittorio Lindiardi, Annalisa Tanselli, Ricardo Williams, Marta Moselli, and Simon Chili. It has, it has been a real, real important um, new research uh, uh, contribution. So in sum, I would say that most important aspect when defining narcissism, self-esteem, empathic functioning, emotions, entitlement, exposure, attention, admiration seeking, are all part of every individual's regular human uh, functioning. But uh, narcissists range from healthy, situational, reactive, or impaired to pathological, with various degrees of severity, and to sustain narcissistic personality disorder, as well as to malignant forms, criminal behavior, and suicidality. And it is a um, task for, for us to put the, the context um, in place and see and understand both the, what motivates the patient and how can the patient be treated.